All right, thanks for watching. And today I will show that the product of two continuous functions is continuous. Okay, so fact, let's prove that if f and g are continuous at a point x0, then the product is continuous at x0. And we'll prove it two ways, one with sequences and one with epsilon and deltas. Xn converges to x0, then since f is continuous, we know that f of xn converges to f of x0. And since g is continuous, we know that g of xn converges to g of x0, but then, well, what is fg of xn? <clears throat> that is f of xn times g of xn. But the point is, <clears throat> this goes to f of x0, this goes to g of x0. So by the uh, fact that the limit of products of sequences is the product of the limits of the sequences, this goes to f of x0, g of x0, which is fg of x0. Okay. Uh, however, again, this is a bit cheating because it assumes a corresponding result for um, um, sequences, but instead, let's just do it directly with the epsilon delta definition. So proof. And here we need to do a little bit of scratch work because the proof isn't that obvious. So step one, it's just scratch work. So um, what we need to do, we need to estimate fg at x minus fg at x naught. And um, by definition, all that this is, this is f of x, g of x, minus f of x naught, g of x naught. But now remember, this is really beautiful trick, which is similar actually to in the product rule, I believe. And that becomes, all that this is, is just add and subtract f of x, g of x naught, plus f of x, g of x naught, so add and subtract this term, and then minus f of x naught, g of x naught. And it doesn't matter, you could also add, I think, uh, f of x naught, g of x, doesn't matter. And that, the nice thing is what this becomes, well, first of all, this is less than or equal to f of x, g of x, minus f of x, g of x naught, plus f of x g of x naught minus f of x naught g of x naught and now the nice thing is here f of x factors out and here uh, g of x naught factors out so this becomes absolute value of f of x times g of x minus g of x naught plus uh, absolute value of g of x naught times f of x minus f of x naught. And now this is a good sign because remember f is continuous so we can make this small and also g is continuous so we can make this small. The only issue is this f of x depends on x but that's not a big deal because remember we can assume x is close enough to x0 and in particular this is roughly equal to f of x0. So uh, let me just uh, make this precise. Uh, notice since f is continuous, let's say with um, what's called with epsilon equals 1, there is some delta. 
call it delta 1, such that if x minus x naught is less than delta 1, then in particular f of x minus f of x naught is less than 1. But then remember that triangle inequality trick. So this f of x minus f of x naught that is less than or equal to the difference between the absolute values. And that is bigger than or equal to uh, the stuff without the absolute values. So f of x minus f of x naught. And this, and we know this is less than 1. So going back with this equation to this equation, we actually get that f of x is less than uh, 1, for f of x naught, plus 1. All right, and that's very good. So this finally motivates our choices. So essentially, um, we want to choose uh, epsilon in some sense, such that this is less than epsilon over this term, and also here we want to kind of choose the epsilon such that it's less than epsilon over this term but with a little tweak. So, now let's uh, do the proof. So that was just the scratch work and now we need to do the proof. So, step two. Let epsilon be given. Then first of all, uh, there is delta 1, such that if x minus x naught is less than delta 1, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than 1. And that implies the following. That implies, remember, that f of x is less than f of x naught plus 1. And moreover now, uh, since again f is continuous, okay, we also know uh, if one there is delta 2 such that if x minus x naught is less than delta 2, then since g is continuous, we know that uh, g of x minus g of x naught is less than, well, epsilon over this term. Let's say f of x naught plus 1. But because we have two terms, we need to divide it by 2. And lastly, there is delta 3, delta 3, such that if x minus x naught is less than delta 3, then what do we have? f of x minus f of x naught is less than well, epsilon over, well, g of x naught, except the problem is this might be zero, so, but not a huge problem, let's just add one to this. So epsilon over two times that. And then, finally, what we get, so if you choose delta to be the smaller one of the three, so if delta, is the minimum of delta 1, delta 2, delta 3, then if x minus x naught is less than delta, then all three things are true, and therefore we can just estimate the difference Then what do we have? Remember, fg at x minus fg 
at x naught. So what did we have? We had that this was less than or equal to, uh, what was it, f of x times, um, what was it, uh, g of x minus g of x naught plus uh, g of x naught times f of x minus f of x naught. However, by the previous identity, we've shown that this is less than or equal to f of x naught plus 1. On the other hand, by our definition of, I think, delta 2, we know that we chose this less than epsilon over 2 times that, f of x naught plus 1, and then plus g of x naught over epsilon over 2, g of x naught plus 1. Now the nice thing is, kind of by construction, this cancels out, and well, this one, well, it doesn't quite cancel out, but this is strictly less than that, so indeed, this thing is less than epsilon over 2 plus epsilon over 2, and that is epsilon sorry, epsilon of satisfaction, if you like.